welcome to my humble homestead garden side chat. So today I'm actually going to make a tincture for my mom for her valley fever as well as I am going to strain one of the tinctures that I have already made previously. This is a elderberry echinacea immune health tincture. So I'm going to strain that. And I'm also going to go over some really common herbs um, that we would have in your home, in your kitchen. And some great uses they are um, that we have for them. So yeah, there are some real easy ones to grow. If you want to try to grow um, those in your home, at your home, because herbs are really easy to grow and there's nothing better than having some fresh herbs at your house. Uh, especially if you you know have like a burn or a cold or you have some things just to have like a nice cup of tea a lot of times is a really easy remedy for uh, some things so yeah so I'm gonna go over some common herbs that we have at home um let's see the first one I will go over is basil so basil and this one um, that I'm talking about medicinally is sweet basil basil is an annual herb so growing wise so it does not really do well in the cold but I do have some containers that I grow inside in the summer I just bring them outside then I bring them back in so you can grow indoor outdoor or you can just grow indoor if that's what you like some of them have those hydro growers so anyway so but basil uh, medicinally is uh, very good for the digestive tract and the nervous system it eases gas and stomach cramps um, it's good at preventing and relieving nausea and vomiting. Um, that's not one that I've really tried for that. So that was good for me to hear about. I'm going to try it. Um, it's also a mild sedative and it's been found helpful in treating the nervous and irritability, irritability um, it, as far as depression and anxiety, um, especially if you combine it with lemon balm. Lemon balm is one of those um, herbs that if you've heard the term calming your nerves, that's one that's been used for that. So if you combine that with basil, that's a really good nerve calming one. Um, so it also has antibacterial properties and the juice as a polis. So if you take, um, if you take fresh basil and you take the juice from the leaf, you make it into a polis, it's really good for bug bites. So it helps like the sting and the itching of a bug bite. So the pain, it says, but anyway, so um, a good basil tea for stress and headache is if you take one part basil, one part lemon balm, and a quarter part chamomile. So you just uh, seep that about 10 to 15 minutes with some hot water. You can drink it um, room temperature or warm. If you have a really bad um, migraine, if you soak your feet in some nice warm water, sip on this tea, that would be super helpful. Another one that's super underrated, but is pretty much probably in everybody's kitchen is cinnamon. So cinnamon, it's used, used to boost vitality and improve circulation and also clear congestion. So I, I mean, I suppose if you think of the essential oil, that would be a good one for congestion. It is a digestive aid, especially for bloating and a slug digestive system. Also one of the best, um, Nerbos around for stabling blood sugar. So this is one of the best blood sugar stabilizer. This has been proven in medicine as well. So that's really one to think of. If you have a problem stabilizing your blood sugar, I would think about, you could do a tincture with cinnamon, like take cinnamon bark, just cinnamon bark, and then the, your liquid, like your 80 proof vodka, um, do a tincture for like four to five, six weeks, and then just, you know, take like a little dropper or half a teaspoon of that every day till your blood sugar um, stabilizes. So that's one to think about. But um, let's see, it's also used as an antiseptic, antiviral, antifungal properties. Um, another one, one of my favorites, I talk about it all the time. Um, I'm going to use my, one of my books now. So my uh, Rosemary. Gladstar book. This has so much good information in it too. But garlic. So garlic, I tell you, when I am not feeling good, I will just 
chew on a clove of garlic and sometimes I'll just mix it with raw honey. Otherwise, I'll just chew on it because that, oh my gosh, that makes me feel so good. But garlic is super easy and fun to grow. It does thrive in well-drained fertile soil. So, yeah, garlic is really easy to grow. Um, that's one that's, that's one if you do want to grow it. Otherwise, you know, fresh garlic, you can get almost everywhere, minced, whatever. But garlic is an herb of choice for treating colds, flu, sore throats, poor sluggish digestion. It stimulates the body of white blood cells, boosting the body's immune function. So yeah, it does have natural antibiotic properties in it. It's sulfur compounds the essential oil to make it a potent internal and external antiseptic, antibacterial, and antimicrobial agent effective for treating many types of infections. It has been found effective against several forms of antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria. Garlic is also well known firmifuge and is used to treat intestinal worms in humans and animals. It's good effective for maintaining healthy blood cholesterol levels, helps prevent blood platelet aggression, and makes it a herb of choice for many circulatory issues. So this is also one that helps um, stabilize blood sugar too. And I know people who have diabetes, they eat garlic to help stabilize their blood sugar. So cinnamon and garlic, psh, hey, that is one thing. If you, you know, struggle with diabetes or blood sugar and you want to stay off medication or you're working your way to get off medication, add those too and just add them as helps and see if, you know, stay with your doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm a practicing doctor at all. Um, but, you know, see if that makes an improvement when you go to the doctor and if they say, hey, what you doing? You know, you could just say, I'm eating extra cinnamon and garlic. So, yeah, try that. So that's the garlic one. Then ginger, of course. Ginger hand in hand with garlic are two of my favorites. So um, that's the native of Asia. So we know the, the Eastern medicine, we like all those herbs and stuff. So ginger contains a proto lit, lit oh, I'm gonna say that word, and it contains an enzyme, okay, people, <laughs> that has been shown to reduce inflammation and help repair damaged joints, cartilage tissue, and no wonder it's been a longtime favorite, you know, of treating um, arthritis and joint pain. So yeah, that is good if you got like arthritis, joint pain, add some ginger into your diet. You can add it in teas, you can add it in food, you can add it as a supplement. You know, if you get some dry ginger, you can crush it up like we do the turmeric tablets. So yeah, it's improved circulation in the pelvic pelvis and is often main, a main ingredient in reproductive tonics for men and women and in formulas for menstrual cramps. So that's why that ginger and um, the ginger uh, in the cinnamon tea, that's good too. So you add that together. Um, it lowers blood level triglycerides like so also this one's good with diabetes so ginger and garlic add this one in for the diabetes as well um it also is good for nausea motion i use ginger all the time when i'm nauseous there's ginger gum there's ginger it's marketed so you know if you just some of these if you just add into your into your diet it really does promote that gut health and it gives you a good well overall well-being so yeah so there's so many things sage now some of these are you know you really don't think of how much medicinal properties and and help they have but so there's 750 um salvias around the world so sage i can easily grow sage here so i grow sage indoor and outdoor so and i i just love adding those fresh herbs to my food so, but medicinally, sage is a superb aid in the digestion of rich fatty meats. So if you're eating, you know, if you're eating a lot of like heavy, heavy meals, heavy meats, sage helps in digesting those. So add sage to your recipes or use it on a rub on your roasts and things like that. It's an excellent herb for rebuilding vitality and strength during a long-term illness. Sage tea is a warming, bracing drink, nice mixed with mint or rosemary and lemon balm for a tasty stress reliever. So this has some stress relieving properties. It's also a mild hormonal stimulant and can be effective in promoting regular menstruation, often relieving from hot flashes for men who, oh, for hot flashes and night sweat. So that would be for women, not for men. So now 
if there's children in here, you know, this is just getting a little personal here. So, so sage is helpful for men who have issues with premature ejaculation or night emissions. A funny term is quite troubling problem. It is also an effective remedy for leucoria, a common vaginal infection. So those are just some, you know, some female and men problems that sage is helpful for. So, you know, if you if you struggle just with some of those issues, add sage. Add, you can even make a sage capsule. You can dry it, do that, add it to your diet. You know, sage is great for things that we don't even think about. So uh, it works in part by drying and regulating fluids in the body. So it just kind of, oh, and you know, sage, I use a natural deodorant and I my deodorant is lavender and sage. So I know sage is really good as far as a deodorant goes. So that's that's also, I was gonna think about when my lavender and sage grows, trying to make my own because, you know, the natural ones are, they're, I mean, you know, they're pricier. So yeah, so that was one. And then it, it's a cold and flu fighter because of its astringent antiseptic and relaxing action of the mucous membrane. So the best remedies for laryngitis, tonsillitis, sore throat, you can use it as a spray or a gargle. So if you got a sore throat, you can gargle it and use it as a spray. Sore gums and canker sores. Hey, I didn't know that one either. So there you go. Um, here's a quick uh, sage mouse spray. Two tablespoons dried or fresh sage leaves. Uh, it says a quarter cup brandy or vodka. I guess I didn't, you know, I mean, you could probably use apple cider vinegar. One to two drops peppermint or essential oil. A tablespoon honey for its soothing and sweating properties so that's just like a spray mouse uh spray there so there you go and then time okay so time i love i actually with all the covid going around time has such anti viral and antibacterial properties that people don't know about i order these little like dropper things that are coming and i'm going to make in another video this little nose I just it's like I don't know how to even it it's like this little nose drop stuff and you just you carry it in your purse or your bag if you travel and you just dab it under your nose and it literally kills all those little viral bacterial germs before it sage kills them on contact you guys so it kills them before they go into your nose i literally you can ask my kids when i fly i take neosporin and i rub it on the outside of my nose just to kill all the bacterial stuff before it goes in well sage does that so i found how to make this sage nose drops so, and you just rub them right here and then good to go. So I'm going to make those in upcoming videos, but I don't know. I just saw Sage and I got excited. I had to share that. So anywhere, oh, I'm sorry, time, time. We're on to time now, not Sage, time. Time is a hardy perennial. So it's a perennial that seems to thrive in most climates, though it prefers well-drained alkaline soil with sunny location. So time is a powerful and anti-effective disinfectant and can be used both externally as a wash and internally to help fight infection. It's often used to help ward off colds and as a rinse to treat sore throat oral infection and is, makes a fine tear treating coughs and chest complaints. Is used in many antifungal remedies. A recent study shows that it's rich in anti antioxidants, most plants are, and has a markedly tonic effect supporting normal body functions. It seems to have positive effect on glandular system as a whole and especially the thiamus gland so there we go so that one has a lot of uh things so and there's a thyme syrup for uh treating uh colds and coughs you just take two to four ounces of thyme leaves um and uh you could do the flower fresh is best but dried works too a quart of water and a cup of honey that is great for just soothing cough and sore throat. That's it. So that I would keep in the um, fridge. Let's see what it says. Store in a glass jar in the fridge where the honey will keep for about three to four weeks. Take one half to one teaspoon every couple hours until the cough or cold subsides. So yeah, that's a great natural, natural one. Okay, so those are the ones I just wanted to share. Then, you know, we have turmeric, chamomile. This is a great book. She has a lot of good information in it. But those are the ones I thought 
just that are every day in your, you know, you can grow or you have them in your kitchen that have some uh, properties that we might not think think of have. So right now I'm going to go ahead and show you these tinctures I've made. So this one is the Mullen one that I made. I've already jarred it. I'm going to show you. So I just take a dropper of it. Let's see how dark it is. And I just drop it. You can drop it under your tongue, but it's, I don't really like the taste of it. So I just put it in my tea and then honestly, I don't taste it at all. So for my mom's, I'm making her this one for her valley fever. So really the thing that I wanted to, to go over with you is, let me pull this back so you can see it. I use my digital scale because when you use dried herbs, you want to do a, a five to one ratio. So you want to do like the five. So I'm going to do like two ounces of herbs to 10 ounce of, of the vodka. I use the 80 proof vodka. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her desert willow, <laughs> desert willow, and I'm going to use some mullein for her. And then I also put some yerba mansa and some cypress oil. I just put a little bit, when you add oils to it, you just add just a tiny bit. So I added those because they're also known to help. So what I'm going to do is I have this set to zero. And I'm going to put enough to make an ounce. I mean, I'm sorry, two ounces because it's two to five, two to, what did I say? It's one to five, so it's two to ten <laughs> of the, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to take this and I have my scale zeroed out. Come on, there we go. And then hasn't even moved yet. <laughs> there we go. Point. Okay, now I'm going to take these other, and now this I have some other of the um, white willow here. Oops, these are not open. Look at there. I can get them open here. Oh, there we go. Okay, sure I open them. Because since this takes so long to, you know, it needs to sit for a good four to six weeks, I also crushed up some of these herbs. Okay, that is just about one. Okay. So I also crushed up some of these herbs so she can make capsules. Um, so she can take the capsules until her tincture. Okay, that's 1.7. So I'm gonna put the rest of the, the, the dried mullein in there. Because mullein is also good for your lungs. It's a good lung one and it helps you know coughing and um, but the other ones what we want is for her is the antifungal properties so just a little bit more okay so that's that's the the um and because they're dried i'm doing a weight so that's why i'm using the um the scale because i'm using a weight instead of you know just the how much is in there then i'm going to take our good old handy dandy costco vodka here and I'm just going to fill it so it's 10 there we go I'm just going to use the rest of this and the thing is is that we want to make sure that they're covered that needs to go into recycling oh my gosh my garbage people are going to be like woohoo they must have had a party there um, I'm going to stir it so you want to make sure all of them are covered in the liquid. Not a fan of the smell of that. And then I'm just going to, I already labeled it, so then I'm just going to cover it. Oops, I have an open one here of my lids. And every day I'm going to shake it. Um, every day I'll shake it and then um, for the first week and then after that I'll just Keep it in a dark room and I'll shake it at, you know, like every couple days or so. So there we have it. There's hers right here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain my elderberry one. So do you see how this one's, I love elderberry. So this one's nice and dark and pretty. So I just strain it in like a little cup 
with this. Some people use like, um, uh, oh my gosh, some people use, um, cloth, you know, the, the cloth, the, so they can squeeze out all the herbs. I don't really find it necessary. I just let it sit. So I just let it sit like this. You can see it's draining. Look at that color. And this one, this one actually smells good. It smells like elderberry. It's elderberry and echinacea. It smells amazing. That's the, and then these bottles, I got the dark tincture bottles. This one, I have a bigger one because I used a, a small jelly jar and this thing is full. So, and it comes with these little, like, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of my words. <laughs> I did have a bad migraine last weekend, and that was the first sign is I couldn't come up with words. So I apologize for that. Um, this is ridiculous. Funnel. It comes with these little tiny funnels. But I actually, I have this one, and I like it better because I can use the liquid. So I just take it, and I put it in here, and then I... I strain it into one of these that kind of has a little thing to pour and then I just pour it in the funnel and it is and then I'll actually just let this sit for like an hour I mean you can press and squeeze out the and kind of just press down with a wooden spoon and get all the stuff out of there now I don't compost these leftover herbs because they have alcohol in them I I toss them I personally do I you guys can decide what you want to do with them um, this is actually going to be about probably end up half full and then I'll label it and then I'll keep it in my little I have like a little shelf in my bathroom that's dark and I'll just keep I'll label them and keep them in there these are good pretty much indefinitely they have with that with the alcohol in them they will last for years and years and years it probably will really last for a long time because it's a lot it made a lot this if you feel like a cold coming on and you're not feeling well you can take you know I'd say a half a teaspoon every you know couple hours until you know for like three to five days so you feel better so that's kind of how we we do it with that with that immune booster so that is exactly how we make these tinctures some little education on some herbs that we have around the house how we use them um, mom and I have been having tea every day so we've been having a couple tea uh, cups of the um, we've been having some mullen uh, mullen tea because uh, that's just what we thought was good with a little bit of echinacea I think tonight I'm actually gonna have some chamomile um, what else did I see? I was gonna have some chamomile with something in it. I saw this cypress. I actually started coughing again because it, it was like 70 degrees one day and then snowing the next. So this cypress oil I read is good to put a little bit in your bath. So I was gonna put a little bit in my bath tonight and help that steam out too. Um, I've got a, I'm feeling a lot better, but we have a baby shower for, for the other grandbaby and I wanna make sure I'm 100% before I go down there can't miss out on that so yeah if you like this video go ahead do a thumbs up share and you know click the bell do all those fun things if there are some other subjects that you would like to um like me to discuss share any other herbs you're interested in yeah feel free to ask i'm it's i'm very interested in this topic i'm excited about it I have been noticing, like, you know, when I took the turmeric and things, I noticed that it helps me. So if you have questions, just go ahead and feel free to ask in the comments below. And I'd be happy to share and find out and do some more research on anything you're interested in. I love researching things. Gardening, I'm honestly, I'm hoping to get out there and garden soon. I'm my lake in the backyard is going down so hopefully mom and i can get out there and uh, start doing some prepping for the garden my house plant the seedlings are looking amazing inside so hopefully we'll have growing some food soon all right well you guys be blessed have a great day and thanks for watching bye